I'm going to show you how easy it is to manufacture a protest with TikTok. And hopefully you'll also see how dangerous TikTok actually is. Now, TikTok has been in the news lately, just recently, just today. American lawmakers created a bill to either ban the company or force it to be sold to an American company. TikTok's parent company is called ByteDance, and they are located in the People's Republic of China. And I've often said that TikTok is a CCP cyber weapon. And when people hear me say cyber weapon, they think of a platform launching attacks or stealing personal data. And yeah, TikTok is really no different than any other social media when it comes to that, but there is a huge difference. TikTok is also a cyber weapon in the terms of manufacturing disinformation and creating agents who live in the US and don't even know they're doing the bidding of a foreign government. Now, before I get started, I want to talk about a tool that I actually used to make this video. It was PIA VPN. So click the link in the description below or go to PIAVPN.com slash Macbeth to get 83% off plus four months free. Listen, I am deathly afraid of TikTok. I handle it like I would handle plutonium. When I did the research for this video, I used a virtual machine running Linux protected by PIA VPN. And I'm sure you remember me talking about how I use PAA VPN to watch Australian Netflix and that TV show Yellow Jackets. And that is a use for a VPN. But really, I use it to keep me safe online. PAA VPN has a strict no logging policy. So when you connect, rogue agents of governments can't see where you're going and they can't see where you've been. And this is held up in court. Uh, the FBI actually tried to accuse someone of hacking, and PIA VPN had no logs leading back to the subject. PIA VPN creates a tunnel between your device and the public internet that hackers and rogue governments can't penetrate. So click the link in the description below or go to PIAVPN.com slash Macbeth to get 83% off plus four months free. Now let's talk about why TikTok is so dangerous. You know, back in 1962, there was this movie called The Manchurian Candidate. It was about a Korean War veteran who was captured by the Chinese and was brainwashed into becoming this unwitting assassin. And when this uh, assassin sees the Queen of Diamonds, he becomes activated as an assassin. And that's pretty much what TikTok is doing. If you take a look at Aaron Bushnell, a former Air Force Intel guy, who did something I can't talk about on YouTube, but I'll call a silly thing in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington, DC, you kind of have to ask yourself, how did Aaron Bushnell become radicalized? Did he travel to Yemen? Uh, did he learn Arabic? Did he study the Quran? Did he work with an aid organization in Gaza and saw the horrible conditions of the Palestinian people there? Or maybe, Aaron Bushnell was radicalized by a combination of social media and raw footage streaming 24-7 from Gaza. I mean, most millennials get their news from social media, and TikTok is the top news source for Gen Z, and increasingly is the most popular news source for Americans overall. So now we have a news organization that is ultimately under the influence of a foreign country that is under the influence of the Chinese Communist Party. Hey, remember uh, 1988, uh, there was that movie Working Girl, Melanie Griffith, Sigourney Weaver? No? You know? All right. The movie is about an ambitious secretary who comes up with an idea to save her client from being acquired by a Japanese company. And the idea involved purchasing a radio station because at the time, foreign companies were prohibited from owning American media companies. Uh, this was banned by the Federal Communications Commission. See, my idea is that they get their feet wet in radio and build from there. I mean, it's not as glamorous as jumping right into TV, but it's a solid place to start, and there's a lot more of them for sale. Plus, it would solve Trask's problem with his Japanese competitors trying to take him over, because FCC forbids foreign ownership of radio as well as TV. <laughs> Come for the intelligence analysis, stay for the obscure 80s movies. I mean... Could you imagine Ronald Reagan uh, allowing the Soviets to buy an American television station back in 1988? Well, I don't think they're going to be doing that. So, it looks like today the FCC approves foreign media ownership on a case-by-case -case basis, but let's look at TikTok demographics, and you're going to see something really interesting. This is, this is worse than the Soviets buying a news channel in 1988. We're talking 150 million monthly active U.S. TikTok users, and that was as of March 2023. 
Uh, the American news channel, CNN, reaches about 53 million monthly households. So a unit that's ultimately reporting to the Chinese Communist Party has three times as many American viewers as CNN. Why are we letting this happen? And here's the ultimate culmination of this. This video was sent to me by a few people. Uh, I, I didn't really know what to do with this video because I'm not going to make a video where I just make fun of somebody. But what's interesting is that once I heard about this bill, I put two and two together and went, oh my God, this is how it starts. Um, so I'm going to show you the video and then I'm going to point a few things out. I don't need... I don't know if I need to do a trigger warning or whatever, but uh, this video is really racist. It contains a swear word that I'm going to bleep out. Uh, but if you can't handle an adult discussion on racism, uh, skip to this time up here. It makes me feel... <laughs> I was on the train yesterday on the way to JFK to get on the plane, and there was a group of Orthodox Jews in front of me. And my first thought was, I wonder... I wonder if they are in support of this <laughs> imperialist colonizer settler yeah, state that is Israel. And I wonder if they're in support of this occupation and this genocide. And then I immediately just, I want to just like, stay the fuck away from me. Yeah, that girl really said that. She set up her camera and she willingly recorded herself crying because she was triggered by seeing a couple of Orthodox Jews on the train. Did this girl become radicalized by traveling to Yemen? Maybe she was studying the Quran. Maybe she was learning Arabic. Maybe she was working in a refugee camp in Gaza. Notice how she pauses when she says imperialist, colonizer, settler. Imperialist, colonizer settler it's like she's reaching for words it's probably because these are words that she just learned in the past few months and these aren't words that normal people use in everyday conversation and actually what's kind of funny is that uh, people who talk about israel and colonizers should really read about the founding of islam i mean by the year 750 the umayyad caliphate extended onto three different continents and well, in Islam, you can't forcibly convert anybody. Uh, you can force non-Muslims to pay a jizya if they don't convert. And of course, some people converted because they believed in their heart that there is no God but God, Muhammad is his messenger. And that's cool. But anybody who has studied Islam, like I have, or read the Quran, like I have, knows that Europeans are not the world's only colonizers. And I have said this before, the only reason that you are alive today is that 20 or so generations ago your ancestors rode into a village conan the barbarian style and wiped out everybody living there like that scene in the movie the revenant we are all savages now this doesn't excuse bad behavior today but it does explain it and if we know what we're doing we can take steps to appeal to the better angels of our nature and not do those things and speaking of that if this had been a group of African Americans, which the girl still made this video. I guess racism against Jews is cool now. You know, I'm a, I'm a Protestant from Northern Ireland, and uh, my family used to have to think about what neighborhood they walked through going home, because if it was a Catholic neighborhood, you could get into a lot of trouble. A few days ago, a video popped up on Twitter of uh, an Army warrant officer who was defending a Chinese American postal employee uh, when the recorder of this video said something racist about the Chinese. You told her, go back to China, it's not China. You, not look, look your army outfit doesn't mean nothing. You want to do hand-to-hand -hand combat outside, let me know anytime you want. Okay, turn the camera off. Anytime outside. you want. Turn the camera off, let's go outside. Anytime you want. Turn let's the camera go. off, let's go outside. Let's go. Let's go. Call the cops. Look. Asians do a lot for this country, all right? Uh, Don't call her a communist about being in China. Do. That army warrant officer who stood up for the Chinese woman, that's America right there. Not this. Not her. That's not America. So remember how I talked about the Manchurian candidate? You know, we now have 150 million Manchurian candidates, including this woman. And their activation can be as easy as making a video. And I want to show you how easy it is. 
So uh, I went and got a TikTok advertiser account and uh, know that I am so afraid of TikTok that I did it on a virtual machine behind a VPN. That's how scared I am of TikTok. Um, now note that if you see me on TikTok, it's a person that stole my content. Uh, multiple people pretend to be me on TikTok and TikTok never does anything about it. But let's do the demo. So let's say I want to shut down I-495, which uh, is the main highway in Washington, D.C., and I'm going to protest Gaza. Here's how I would go about doing it through TikTok. I'm going to log into my TikTok merchant account, and I'm going to choose lead generation. I'm going to choose a custom audience and choose D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. So basically people who live near the Beltway. I'm also going to choose a custom audience, which is females between the ages of 18 and 34. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is that I'm basically targeting the kind of radicalized women uh, that we see in this post and the ones who tried to shut down Mayor Bowser in Washington, D.C. Uh, and I want to, to target these women because if you invite women, men will come. Back when I first joined the military in the early 90s, my first sergeant was a Vietnam vet. And he said that he was stationed at the Pentagon and he would go to anti-war protests, not to protest, but to meet girls. And the girls would see he's a soldier and they would think, oh, I'm going to bring him in to our way of thinking. And he, he wasn't there for that. He was there for an entirely different reason. And it worked. So if we invite women, we'll also get the friends who think they have a chance. And I'm going to make my language English and Arabic. And I wanted to be Arabic because I'm hoping that some Palestinian women will be there because this will create photo opportunities for all the wealthy and activist women that we're actually targeting. And the amazing part about this is they don't even know that they're being manipulated. So we can use virtue signaling to our benefit in this case. So this will increase social media engagement after the event. For interests and behaviors, I want women who are into luxury hotels, museum exhibits, char uh, travel, charity, environmental protection, health and wellness. The reason is that you want women uh, who have enough disposable income that they can take off work or travel to go protest, or we're talking about college students who are professional agitators. So this is kind of where environmental protection people come into play. Those people know how to organize, they know how to protest. I'm also looking for people who liked commented or shared social news, social issues, or environmental protection issues. These people are more likely to attend a protest than people who just pass the video by and didn't do anything. So in this case, I want the protest to be March uh, 26th of 2024. That is a Tuesday. And the reason I'm choosing that is for maximum carnage. A lot of people in Washington, D.C. work from home on Mondays and on Fridays. So we're gonna go for a Tuesday so we can cause the biggest traffic jam we can. I'm gonna give myself a budget of $1,000 a day, I said that, and I'm gonna set this to run from the 13th to the 25th, which is 13 days. So we're talking $13,000. Uh, this should give me between 52 and 156 leads per day, or between 676 and 2,028 leads for the entire campaign. Honestly, I only need 10 or so people to shut down the highway. Then I need a creator to make me a video. I, I just need to call some creator or contact and just be like, hi, my name is Ryan from the Ceasefire Coalition. I'm organizing a protest on the Beltway to shut down traffic. Will you make a video? Uh, here are the details. Now with a larger budget, I could, uh, I could actually target multiple cities. And if TikTok had an armory, in every American city and was just handing out weapons to civilians on the street, how fast would we, would we shut that armory down, right? But when we have 150 million people who could be weaponized and be on the streets at the bidding of a foreign government, each of whom could be a potential insider threat, we don't do anything? <laughs> I mean, TikTok already conducted a cyber warfare strike against the United States. It urged its followers to contact Congress, which overwhelmed the congressional phone lines, interrupting the business of Congress. So what can we do? Well, there, this is a free country, right? Usually banning things doesn't work, and there may be a freedom of speech component to allowing TikTok to exist. But it might be possible to force a sale to an American company or even just to restrict social media usage to people who are over 18 years of age. One of my biggest fears 
<clears throat> with Aaron Bushnell is that people praised his actions. People made t-shirts. People suggested that he was going to be a martyr and people should emulate him. I'm very glad this is going viral because things like this can't happen in vain. Aaron Bushnell it was a very brave person, beyond brave. And I am still afraid of copycats. Copycats may emerge and try to emulate what Aaron Bushnell did, the silly thing he did in front of the Israeli embassy. Do you want your son or daughter to become a copycat? And I don't want that to happen to anybody. Okay, lighter note. Hey, uh, if you can't get enough Ryan Macbeth, why don't you put him on your desk with a Ryan Macbeth in-action figure from the Knife Hand Company. Uh, it even comes with a Ryan Macbeth trading card with uh, my uh, bio stats on the back. Uh, you can get that from the Knife Hand Co. And of course, you can always get one of my uh, U.S. Navy world's largest distributor of Iranian drone parts shirt, hoodie, or sticker. You can get that at BunkerBranding.com. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Please delete TikTok from your phone and the phones of your kids. It is a cyber weapon. Hey everyone, new Ryan Macbeth t-shirts and hoodies from Bunker Branding are available. I'm going to get the Highmars shirt. What are you going to get, Donald? The Patriot shirt, because I'm a Patriot. It's the best shirt, the biggest shirt. Make 14 tangos great again. What are you going to get, Barack? Let me be clear. I'm going to get a drone sweet drone shirt. What about you, George? I'm going to get a knife hand shirt because they're weapons of mass destruction. What about you, Billy? Oh, I'm going to get a landmine marker shirt because my presidency always blew up in my face. I'll tell you what I'm going to get. Ronald Reagan, but you're dead. I came back to tell you that no matter our politics, we're all Americans. And we should buy Ryan's hoodies and t-shirts because they pay for the stock footage and licenses that allow him to make awesome content. So come on down to Bunker Branding and buy a Ryan Beth t-shirt or I'll start the bombing in five minutes.